Hello and welcome. You're watching the Winning Post. I'm Andira Lalwani, and on this episode, we're going to talk about all the racing action. But first up, the headlines. On this week's episode of the Winning Post, we bring you all the highlights from the Melbourne Cup, the Raffles Cup in Singapore, and of course, tell you what's making news on social media. The Melbourne Cup is Australia's most prestigious annual thoroughbred horse race. It is the richest two-mile handicap in the world and one of the richest turf races conducted by the Victoria Racing Club on the Flemington race course as part of the Spring Carnival in Melbourne. It's a 3,200-metre race for three-year-olds and over and thoroughbreds from all around the world participate. This year's renewal of the Emirates Melbourne Cup had 24 horses to battle it out for a stake of $6.2 million and to cement their names in history. Heartbreak City, trained by Tony Martin, was coming into this race on the back of three wins in the Tipperary races, that is Maiden Hurdle on the 26th of May, the Guinness Handicap Hurdle on the 29th of July, and the Betfred Ebor Heritage Handicap over 2,816 metres at York on the 20th of August, and would be looking for yet another win with Joe Marrera partnering him. Hartnell, trained by John O'Shea, many believed was equal or superior to win leading into the Cox Plate. That may have seemed fanciful, but it was impossible to ignore his form for this preparation. A deserved favourite who was a big chance of giving Godolphin their first Melbourne Cup with James McDonald in the saddle. A lightly raced seven-year-old Monson gelding, Al Mandin, trained by the Williams private trainer Robert Hickmott at Macedon, was having just his 12th start after an injury-interrupted career. He came into the race after winning the Group 3, the Bart Cummings over 2,500 metres at Flemington back on the 2nd of October, carrying 55 kilos under Damien Oliver and would now have the services of Karen McAvoy. Big Orange, trained by Michael Bell and ridden by Jamie Spencer, was fifth last year with 55.5 kilos. It was a must for him to carry the additional weight this year and improve four places. The distance was not a problem as he came off a victory of the 3,219 metres in the Group 2 Goodwood Cup on the 28th of July. The four-year-old Colt Exospheric, now trained by Lee and Anthony Friedman, ran third in the Coalfield Cup over 2,400 metres and would have the services of Damien Oliver. Anthony Friedman and Oliver have won eight Melbourne Cups together and were definitely hoping to get the ninth with Exospheric. Jamica from Claren Mayher's yard was last year's Crown Oaks winner and was relishing spring racing once again. She was dominant in the Coalfield Cup after a strong second to Hartnell in the Turnbull Stakes. She had been near the top of the market for a while now and would have Nicholas Hall guiding her past the post. They're set for the Melbourne Cup. Racing. Hartnell jumped well in the middle of the line with Exospheric, an oceanographer. Secret number jump no K. Showing some speed as Big Orange down towards the inside ahead of Jamaica and Penn Taft on Rosa. Virginia's pretty prominent as well. Now from the outside, Whitlow Brave or well, Frankie staying a very deep run, virtually on his own, right out wide on the course. Up there too is a sign. Current Moronics come over for Tommy Berry, actually ran to the lead. Excess knowledge is there as well, and Kiwi is getting into a place just behind the leading bunch of horses. Who shot the barman's gone right back, and so too is beautiful romance. And as they settle into stride, there's about seven or eight right across the track here. Big Orange close to the inside, headed by Excess Knowledge and Karen Morotic. Out deeper is a sign, and the light blue cap has moved up now into fourth placing. So down to the judge, Excess Knowledge on the outside, narrowly from Karen Morotic, a sign. And then Big Orange, Whitlow Brave trapped out wide. Followed by Grey Lion just in behind them with Rosa Virginia and Kiwi three wide turning out of the straight. Jamaica about four pairs back on the inside from Al Ivanhoe. Then came Secret Number, followed by Gallant midfield on the inside. Hartnell's next on the outside of Oceanographer. About a length and a half away, Heartbreak City. And then came Exospheric. They're trailed by Al Mandin a long way back in the field. Then came Bondi Beach from Al Moonquith. Uh, they were being followed then by Heartbreak. Back towards the end is Beautiful Romance. Grand Marshall is back amongst the tail enders as well. Heartbreak City a long way from them as they go out towards the 1,700 metres. And then Pentathlon. He's back towards the end of the field. And who's the barman was last with Sir John Hawkwood third from last as they made their way by the 1600 metres excess knowledge leading narrowly on the outside secret number keeping him honest they're a length and a half clear 
Karen Morotic getting a lovely run on the inside of Wicklow Brave just shading him now they were two lengths clear from a sign and then came Big Orange a length and a half to Grey Lion and Kiwi together one and a half to Hart Nelly be about seven or eight lengths away from the leader Jamaica's next on the rails when they go around the back of the course now uh, they were being followed at the 1200 metre mark then by on the outside is our Ivanhoe a length further back and the third is Gallant and then came Heartbreak City followed by Oceanographer Rose of Virginia's up about seventh or eighth outside of Jamaica. Well back in the field, then came Exospheric down on the inside, followed by uh, back behind them is Al Band, and as they run to the home turn in a fiercely run race. Next is Al Mooncrith and Grand Marshal. Well back is Bondi Beach and Pentathlon. Beautiful romance. Then Sir John Hawkwood and Sir at the, at the end of the field is who shot the barman. Coming around the turn of the Melbourne Cup now, and it's a secret number leading narrowly from excess knowledge. Wicklow Brave is under pressure when they turn in. It's been a relentless run cup. Who's going to be the last man standing? Hartnell and Jamaica peel to the outside. Here comes Heartbreak City leading down with a beautiful run too. Up the middle of the course, and El Mandon joins in. Heartbreak City and El Mandon race up to Hartnell. They look the free from El Moonquit. It's Heartbreak City. El Mandon on the outside. They've paired down to find it out. Heartbreak City the inside and El Mandon on the outside. El Mandon and Heartbreak City. What a finish to the Melbourne Cup. El Mandon putting his nose in front of Heartbreak City. They hit the line. El Mandon. El Mandon won it by a very narrow margin from Heartbreak City. Five lengths away was Hartnell third. Did yeah, Joe was very vocal and my horse was just willing to win. He, he just had a dream run and um, Lloyd's prepared him great. You know, he came with a plan to get him in the race through that other race, uh, the Bar Cummings and had a nice little four-week break into today. So he was there for me the whole way, the horse. As soon as I pressed the button, he was away. So just a great buzz. I'm very, you know, I'm very lucky, privileged to have won a second cup and it's great to do it in these colours for, for Mr Williams and his, and his family. Now they say you get better as you get older, so I think I'm going to be in that category as well. So I'm feeling well and riding well. And, you know, I've got a big team behind me, which I'd like to thank, obviously, my wife and family and a good team up there in Sydney, uh, physios, um, people that have helped me along the way, my manager, uh, my family back home in Streaky Bay. Um, just thrilled to be able to do it for Mr. Williams and his family. Multi-millionaire local Lloyd Williams denied Ireland their very own fairy tale of New York as his Alman Din and the insatiable Karen McAvoy held off Tony Martin's Heartbreak City to capture the 156th running of the Emirates Melbourne Cup. The Ebor winner surged forward with Alman Din inside the final two furlongs and it was only in the dying strides that McAvoy forced the Robert Hickmott train Alman Din into the lead to score by a head. The Victorian owner Lloyd Williams has now won a record of five Emirates Melbourne Cups and jockey Karen McAvoy his second. The stake of $3,600,000 dwarfed Almandin's previous earnings of $349,958. The Raffles Cup was inaugurated in 1991 at the Bukitima Racecourse and raced there through 1999 when the tracks closed to be replaced by the new Kranji Racecourse. The Raffles Cup is the second leg of the Singapore Triple Crown. It comes after the Kranji Mile and is followed by the Singapore Gold Cup. This year's renewal of the Group 1 race had seven thoroughbreds to run over a distance of 1,800 metres and is open to three years and older horses. Pat Shaw's charge, Quichua, who ran second in the trials too on the 20th of October and had a win in the Chairman's Trophy over 1,800 metres on the 7th of August, would be looking to win this race with Baron Voster in the saddle. War Affair, winner of the 2014 edition of the Raffles Cup, who is now trained by Bruce Marsh, battled on well when beaten fair and square in the Panasonic Kranji Mile on the 9th of October and would definitely be looking to go better this time out with Danny Beasley on board. The four-year-old debt collector, trained by Cliff Brown, had a remarkable run of six straight wins after dislodging his regular hoop. He was a three-start maiden less than 12 months ago when losing the hoop, but has since then added four group races to his CV, including the two premier miles at the Group 1 level. This was his first crack beyond the mile along with his winning partner Michael Rod. Mr. Spielberg from Laurie Laxon's yard ran third in the Chairman's Trophy on the 7th of August over 1,800 metres and fifth in the Panasonic Crunchy Mile on the 9th of October over 1,600 metres and would be looking to improve on that performance with Lad Jurich riding him. Is racing in the raffles. 
Majestic moments at also Keshwa begin well. Titanium's relatively handy today. He's moving up on the outside with his rider looking around, but he's up on the pace. We don't see this too much from Titanium, but he's going to amble to the front by the looks of things. Over Keshwa and also Majestic moments. War Affair not up on the pace for the time being. Is fourth and out about three and four deep. Debt Collector's gone back, so too. Well done. He's second last. And Mr Spielberg through on the inside with 1,400 metres left to go, and it's Titanium bowling along clear. A length and a half from War Affair who now strides up into second. A length and a half away, Keshwa. He's back third. Majestic Moments running fourth. Being followed then by Debt Collector. A length and a half away in fifth. Mr Spielberg sixth on the inside. And the Derby winner, which is well done. He's back in last. And for the time being, he's following Debt Collector as they prepare to make this turn off the far side. And it's Titanium 27.62 for the first 400. So he's only walking them here in a new role as pacemaker. Today it's Titanium leading out from well done. There's been no pace. They work down the side here in the raffle. Cup, two lengths away, then Keshwa third. Majestic moments running fourth. 800 metres left to go in the group one. Further back then, Debt Collector, who's yet to go. Mr Spielberg, ridden for luck over near the fence for the time being, and well done. Pulls out three and four deep as they race on down towards the 600. On the point of the turn here in the Rapples Cup, and Titanium leads out from uh, on the outside. War Affair, the winner from two years ago. He travels all right. A few lengths away, Keshwa, Mr Spielberg, then Majestic moments. Here's Debt Collector, and well done. They're across the track in the Rapples Cup, and it's War Affair who got the better of Titanium. Debt Collector down the outside. Mr Spielberg coming through. Majestic moments. Keshwa well done. Still a fair way off them. War Affair fighting hard on the inside. Debt Collector on the outside. Keshwa coming through. It's War Affair. Debt Collector. Keshwa. Mr Spielberg with a run. It's Debt Collector. He's going to do it again. Debt Collector over Keshwa and also very close uh, for third. Mr Spielberg or War Affair who ran a mighty race. Then Titanium. Well done. He just liked the ping there and he finished a fair way back and also Majestic Majestic moments. He's remarkable, Matty. I, I honestly didn't, I, I say it every time, but genuinely this time I thought, oh no, he's going to get beaten today. And look, his last 100 metres is, is phenomenal. It's like he sees where everyone is. And, and he was sort of under pressure and really fighting to get there. And then on the line, he's actually easing up. He's remarkable. That was a good effort today. Obviously, um, it was just a real tactical sort of race early. He began well, but we were in a line early and Danny sort of, he was looking to take a sit and I just sort of stayed three deep trying to work out what was going to happen there because I thought he was going to be sort of the pace and you know as it turned out Harry rolled to the front and um, you know it was a real sprint home and when when we had to go up the top of the straight he um, uh, well done tried to come around me and it was time to go and my bloke changed legs at that point too early and I thought oh no this isn't good he's already sort of swapping around I want him to come down the hill and go through his gears but to his credit, he, you know, I just held him together for as long as I could and when I thought it was time to push the button and, and try and get past those couple of front horses, um, I just trusted him, you know. Before I went out, um, Tim said to me, just trust him, you know, and I had to do that at the 400. I couldn't go taking off and I just had to wait to the 250 and then give him a squeeze and, and hope it was there. And Look, it's, um, you know, it's amazing. It's, a, it's just such a thrill to be a part of a horse like this. You know, it's great to be involved with, with Glenn. Um, you know, he's been coming up here. He's got a few horses here now, but he's been coming up here every week to see Deck Collector and, you know, it's, um, you know, Cliff and the team and they just do such a good job, so it's a buzz. Singapore's new racing sensation, Debt Collector, again showed he knew where the winning post was when he came with his trademark surging run to secure his fifth feature race. The son of Thorn Park made it two from two with another scintillating performance, but any hopes of seeing history being rewritten with a first Triple Crown winner this year had long been ruled out. As trainer Cliff Brown had made it clear from the outset, the debt collector would not be going the whole hog into the third leg, the Desta Singapore Gold Cup, on the 20th of November. Now I'd like to invite uh, Mr Lim Jubun to present the prizes for the Raffles Cup of 2016, won brilliantly by debt collector from Barry Stable, Glen Wittenbury. A stellar season from a debt collector which includes a Guineas, a Crunchy Mile, and now a Raffles Cup. And from all reports, that's it for 2016. He'll be tipped out for a spell by uh, this man, the winning trainer, his fifth Group 1 of 2016, Cliff Brown. What a season for this trainer, Cliff Brown, and uh, this marvellous horse, Debt Collector, has given him so many highs. Debt Collector finishing his 2016 season, six starts for six wins. Another man who's having a great run in the uh, Group 1s is the winning jockey, it's Michael Rod. Well done to uh, Michael.
Riding in unbelievable form, an incredible strike rate here in 2016 and yet another Group 1 for him. He's really had a stellar season. In fact, a couple of seasons here at the Singapore Turf Club and his uh, Group 1 strike rate quite incredible. Well, that's it for the Rapples Cup of 2016. It's Debt Collector victorious again, remaining undefeated in 2016. The sire list, based on monetary figures for 2016 for Great Britain, has Galileo on top, who has earned £7,793,733 from 67 wins, with Minding being the best performer, earning more than £1.5 million. In second is Jubawi, who has postponed as the best performer, earning £773,383, while Pivotal in third, See the Stars fourth, Dark Angel in fifth and Kodiak in sixth. In the winner's list, it was Kodiak on top with 81 wins while he was sixth in the monetary list. Dark Angel was second with 80 wins while Acclamation was in third, Exceed and Excel in fourth with 77 wins, Kailaki in fifth with 66 wins and Dubawi in sixth with 63. To Hong Kong now, where the list by way of monetary rewards for 2016-2017 includes Holy Roman Emperor on top, earning more than 7.5 million Hong Kong dollars, with designs on Rome being the best performer, earning close to 3 million Hong Kong dollars. Second was Fastnet Rock, third was I'm Invincible, fourth was Thorn Park, Starcraft in fifth, and Nikoni, who was fourth, has dropped down to the sixth place. Thorn Park, who was fourth in the monetary table, has topped the winner's table with six wins, while Holy Roman Emperor, who has topped the monetary list, is second in the winner's table with five wins. In third was Fastnet Rock, fourth was Exceed and Excel with five wins, and I Am Invincible is fifth with four wins, and Starcraft in sixth place. In the New Zealand style list for 2016-2017, by way of the monetary yardstick, there is Savabil on top who has earned $642,855, with Kawi, the best performer, earning $250,000. In second place was Tavistock with an earning of $400,270, with Nymph Monte, the best performer, earning $91,500. Darcy Brahma is in third, while Ifraj has dropped down to fourth position with an earning of $370,610. Zacinto is in fifth and Keeper sixth. In the winner's list, it was Darcy Brahma who tops it with 27 wins. Ifraj is in second with 19, Keeper third, while Savabil has moved up one place to fourth with 18 wins and has also topped the monetary list. Purin Kanto is in fifth and Alamosa finishes sixth. And finally, it's the Singapore style list for the monetary list for 2016-2017 are Darcy Brahma, who tops the monetary table with close to $2 million with majestic moments as the best performer, earning over half a million dollars. Thorn Park second, with earnings of $1,628,730, with Debt Collector as the best performer, earning $1,348,096. Falkirk in 3rd, Elusive City 4th, Showcasing in 5th and Tavistock in 6th. A look at the winner's table and Darcy Brahma topped the winner's table too with 15 wins ahead of Elusive City with 10 wins while Showcasing has moved up to 3rd and Casino Prince in 4th with 8 wins, Alamosa in 5th and Ifraj with 7 wins in 6th place respectively. On to social media now and here's what's making all the buzz. The RWITC Mumbai track is all set to rock the racing season in Mumbai as the track was prepared a month in advance. Chennai, Bangalore, Delhi races have all been postponed till further notice and that seems to be on top of everybody's minds. Horse racing and of course betting in India comes to a halt due to the currency notes decision. Hopefully should all be back on track soon. And that's all we have time for in this episode of The Winning Post. Remember, if you've missed anything at all, you can always catch it on our YouTube channel. We look forward to hearing from you on Facebook, on Twitter. So make sure you keep engaging with us. Goodbye and until next time, may the horse be with you.